Hello, hello, hello everyone. Dreams. Hey guys, love your videos. Thank you so much. Foma, do it. <laughs> you got to get this Even it's uh, uh, even if Alex's company they take every other Friday off, he's always working. Ah, oh, from Virginia. Hello, Virginia. So I guess the sun's definitely down there. It's pretty sunny. I don't want to wear sunglasses. I just want to get this brightness up. All right, just bear with us until we figure this out. How do I crank it? Damn bad to... boy. Oh, but you're Moroccan. All right, for, ben, we are on max brightness apparently. It's just bright outside today. Hello, dreams. Morocco all the way. <laughs> I still haven't been to Morocco. I said I gotta have to do that soon, but. Yeah, we're getting there. Anyway, so you want to break the ice for what we're going to talk about today? I've been thinking about Morocco today. I, you know, sometimes when you move to new places or new chapters of your life and you just fall in love with something new. Like when I was in Morocco, I, <laughs> yeah. When I was in Morocco, I didn't really, I didn't do any hiking or exploring outdoors. And when I moved here, I always start thinking about what it would be like to go back to Morocco and do some hiking in there and explore the mountains. And I've been thinking about Mount Toubkal this morning. I've never been, I've never done Mount Toubkal in Morocco, which is pretty ridiculous for, you know, being such a nice mountain up there. And I certainly didn't hike until I met you. I mean, the first hike I did was Camelback. I mean, let's be honest. And I was huffing and puffing badly. Yeah, well, you're, you beat me up now. <laughs> My husband and I are going next week. Wish us good luck. Best of luck. Oh, all right, definitely. Yeah. Is it tough to get in right now? I, I, I feel like everywhere is... Yeah, what's the situation like? I'm assuming that you're, are get, you, you're both Moroccans and obviously holding an American passport, probably. I think it should be fine, because I was there in December to see my family for Christmas. It was just with all the international easy. travel, though. They definitely, like, you had to have your tests and everything done, or if there's... Ah, so easy yeah. to accidentally start talking about COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's not Moroccan. Okay. Yeah. But it was it was fine for me. I feel like everyone was pretty understanding, and it was good when I went back in December. And I'm sure things are a lot better right now. I just remember you went through France though, and you wanted to see somebody. Oh, yeah, I wanted to see my sister. And okay. they wouldn't let you out of the airport. No, Which France. Is a big bummer. Yeah, so. you can, I was so bummed because a, I've never been to Paris before, and my sister just moved to Paris back then, <laughs> and I really wanted to go see her and see Paris, but really just see Paris. <laughs> but <laughs> they said no, you can't get get into Paris. So literally, just spend the night at the airport in uh, Charles de Gaulle Airport, and it was pretty. It was a fun adventure, even spending the night at the at the airport because they had these little airport capsules just small tiny little rooms and it was it was fun to to try that it looked like hollywood squares but with just you know beds in them and you know you couldn't see them from the outside obviously yeah well dreams safe travels and uh, enjoy morocco uh, my co-workers asked me when i was leaving to morocco they said what is the best meal or dish or food that you want to try when you go back home and i said I want to have Hawaii. It's like my oh. favorite soda. <laughs> <laughs> and I love Hawaii. Hawaii is like the best soda there is. And you're not the confused. World. She's in not talking opinion. about the state of Hawaii. No, the drink. It's a drink called Hawaii. It's like an orange cream soda. Tropical. Soda? Tropical soda, yeah. Tropical soda. It's Maybe really not cream soda, good. but like oh an orange God. soda. So what did you think about it? I thought it was tasty, but yeah. I, I guess it was just one of those, like some of the ingredients were not FDA approved. So there wasn't no bringing that back. I think I asked some, uh, what, uh, at some point I asked in one of the groups and I said, why is not, uh, there's no Hawaii here in the U.S. And they said that it's not going to appeal to, to the flavor or to, to the public here. And then, so I, 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 I thought. I think it was the FDA though. Yeah, probably <laughs> just FDA approvals. Or that yellow number five or whatever the heck it is. Oh my God, I could give like my, 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 my soul to get Hawaii right ah, now. You've got a, you've got a fan <laughs> of Hawaii. Oh my God, it's FOMAS, you know what? Like oh no, no, his dreams was saying that uh, Hawaii was Hawaii is the were. best. I know, Hawaii is the best. Like every, I think every Moroccan would agree that Hawaii is the best soda. But your other one is the Rani that you'll get from the, oh, the store. Oh, I love Rani. Which has like chunks of fruit in it, which I gotta oh admit was God. okay, but 
It's just like they give it to you in this little teeny tiny can. I love Ronnie. And I'm like, well, I feel like I need more. If I'm going to chew on my drink, I would like there to be, you know, a liter of it, at least. But Rani is not a, a Moroccan drink per se. It's more popular in the Middle East, but it's also pretty good. Fomat. Fomat, we should... Uh, if I get any Hawaii soda when my parents <laughs> come here or someone, we'll make sure to send you a little one. Oh, is it, I'm not that, FDA yeah. approved either. It's all, all that dietary fiber. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. But let's see, other than that then too, the other thing that I get... I can't make sense of is the yogurt soda that we come across. I'll be done with it after that, but that's the one that I, I'm, I'm not even like ready to try that yet. Yogurt soda? Yeah. What's yogurt soda? Oh, the it's not yogurt soda. It's uh, a yogurt drink. It's not soda. That's, that's carbonated? It's carbonated. <laughs> yogurt soda. <laughs> Yoda, that's what it's called. <laughs> okay. My God, I'm so thirsty. I've been drinking the whole day. Okay, so, so anyway, welcome, welcome everyone. We've got three people watching. When we were walking to this spot, this is becoming our usual spot to, you know, film our live streams. We were thinking, what are we going to talk about today? What are we going to talk about today? Hi, you see what she did there? <laughs> no, no, there was a plan. And hey, the plan Mark. that we wanted to bring up was um, how to become confident in the outdoors. Yes. And that would include, in my mind, and I guess we both have the opportunity to experience this a bit differently. Mm -hmm. But um, for me, that was growing uh, my, my backpack, my, my gear list, etc. So that I felt like I had the right material or the right equipment to go out places. As with any hobby, uh, getting started is expensive, right? Like if you were to start skiing, you got to go buy all that stuff. Or you have to rent things every single time you go. And you never feel a sense of ownership, nor do you get familiar with stuff, nor do you develop an attachment to it. So getting shoes that I was comfortable to start wearing that were meant only for hiking, which already to have more than one pair of shoes was difficult for me. Yeah. Um, and then to have a backpack. And I found that a backpack in the beginning I thought was fairly obvious. And I just grabbed a regular one. And then I realized that a regular backpack isn't quite it. I've really come to like backpacks that have the ability for a bladder so that I can carry my water internal when I need to rather than having to fish out water bottles all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I mean gear to that extent. Stuff that enables you to go out and be familiar. For you, though, you were saying it's... Well, so uh, the reason I thought we would we'll talk a little bit about confidence or gaining confidence in the outdoors is, first of all, I receive a decent amount of messages on, on Instagram from people asking, you know, how do you build the confidence to go outside? How do you acquire the necessary skills? Because for me personally, it's not something that I grew up doing. Because there are a lot of people, they grew up going outside, hiking and camping or hunting with their families or friends but it's not something I feel like it's it just it's not something that I grew up doing and I had to learn the little bits that that I know right now and I so so I thought we'll talk about the little things that you can do in order to become more confident and go out and explore the outdoors whether you are man a woman a couple or just solo is what I'm trying to say um, okay, so we've got Mark, we've got Mike, and the dreams. You guys should try a trip to Virginia. Beautiful hiking spots here with extra cicadas. cicadas so I'm from now. the East Coast, actually. I, I vaguely recall there being like seven year cicadas, which were like the cicadas that came around like once every seven years, and they are monstrous. They're huge, is what I remember. Like almost like locusts. Like you would go out and you'd find them underneath the stairs in my, like by my apartment and such. But I remember those cicadas are woo. 17 years now, is that what it is? It's not seven? Or we, did I miss? 17 for what? I, I wanna see if I missed a don't statement. Don't jiggle, don't uh, shake the screen. It'll be a story about what happened last weekend. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, we'll, no, we'll definitely tell you about this weekend. Yeah, oh we my did. God. Thanks for reminding us, Foam, as it's so embarrassing, <laughs> but we will share that. Uh, hike with Mike. I feel most comfortable in the woods. I don't feel comfortable in crowded cities, even though I was born in New York, but I have lived in Florida most of my life. Hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, I honestly, when I, I think when I moved to the States, I was so impressed with big cities because I used to live in Chicago before moving to Arizona. And in the beginning, I loved, I loved going to New York and I loved going to San Diego, San Francisco, LA in the beginning. But then later on, it just, I don't, I, I mean, I, I enjoy when we go, last time we went to Seattle was probably two months, three months ago. And I enjoy good. it, but I don't, 
I don't get the same joy and peace that we get from being outside. I feel like for me, it's a difference between Metropolis mm -hmm. and the city. Because even like Phoenix is a big city, but it's a different type of yeah. big city. And Metropolis Phoenix. to me are like big, tall buildings made of steel. You know, big parks that are really tightly packed. And uh, I don't know, every time we go out, I always find that I see a lot of homeless people. And that usually like something yeah. that I don't approach as much here. And it makes me just kind of stop and think differently for a bit. And uh, but I do like that everything is within walking distance in a big city. Yeah, public transport, definitely. buses and trains, etc. I like very much. So, anyway. okay, so back to <laughs> confidence in the outdoors. We're so bad at this. We like keep just know. like talking, talking. <laughs> yeah, there's one podcast. Oh, see, no. See, now you're going off, yeah, going off topic. About but anyway, going off topic. All right. th there's a podcast that uh, Alex introduced me to. It's called Stuff You Should Know, and it's basically just two guys, just like us and you. They're not subject matter experts about anything really in particular, but they just choose random topics and they do heavy research and they come in and talk about the topic. And I love, you know, that you le learn something new all the time, but man, oh man, they just drag the conversation for hours and hours until I fall asleep most of the time. But anyway, so that's just to say that that's pretty much what we do all the time. Just keep on dragging and dragging things. So, okay, so back to confidence in the outdoors. Um, yeah, so I, I kind of was thinking, at least for someone who's new, do you just want to go and hike or backpack and go in the back country and maybe do some backpacking out there? I think a good place to start is to do it with, the, with people. It probably is not the best idea to just jump into something that you're not familiar with and not comfortable with. It's probably a good idea just to start with a group of people, friends that you trust, uh, I mean, nowadays it's, uh, it's easy to find people to do activities with, but it's tricky. It has to be a bunch of people that you trust because we had a pretty interesting experience one time when we joined a group that we don't really know. And at some, in the beginning, we thought we we're going to be hiking as a group, but then at, at some point, they just did their own thing and we were on our own without a map, which was stupid. So really, one of the things is Pick a good group of people. To go Find with. a good group of people. You want to be comfortable. You want to be comfortable. And you want to be very good at communicating with this group of people, whether you already know them or you don't. You know, don't shy away from saying that you're not comfortable with this. Uh, this is my speed. This is my physical uh, level of fitness. And make sure that you really communicate and set expectation with the group you're going with. I don't think you have to, you don't have to overburden it so much all the time. But in the beginning, though, you certainly want to start with somebody around your skill level for the first or second. We had a time where we did a, a pretty long hike with a, a group of friends across the Superstition Ridge Line here. We made sure we knew one of our friends was going to be a lot quicker than us. We said, you know, don't plan to travel back with us. We'll go drop our cars off separately. So there was no expectation for somebody to be like waiting mm -hmm. or to be not, because it's like playing golf. You don't want that feeling that you're constantly being rushed because somebody's right like yeah. behind you or being pushed or pulled along. Uh, and keep it small too. You don't need to necessarily go hike three, four days on your first time. If you want to get out, just make sure you're good for it. Go out for a night if, if you want to go camping, and if you want to go out hiking, go out hiking. I'd probably would say don't do a hike and camp the first time, because uh, it's just kind of dipping your toes into the water at that spot. But that's one thing, you know what I mean? And if you end up liking it, you want to go out on the next day of the weekend or whatever, you can. But, um, but baby steps in that regard. But just be honest with yourself about your growth and your comfort level. If you try to prove something to yourself, uh, you could actually end up having a bad experience that might deter you from even following through on it more in the future. Definitely. Uh, comment from Mike, Hike with Mike. If you want to be confident and comfortable, dress for the climate and weather you will be and the weather that you will be in. Another tip test out all your gear in the backyard before you test it out in the field. And that's a, that's a very good tip. And yeah, so probably we'll start with talking about gear. So now in the beginning where you're just starting, it's kind of overwhelming to be honest. Even for me, it was overwhelming in the beginning when I went hiking with this group and they have all of these equipments that I'm not familiar with. And it takes, it just, what I'm trying to say is that it takes time to acquire all the necessary equipment and all of the fancy gear and sophisticated gear, but it doesn't have to be like that. In the beginning, just start with what you have. So when you know that, you know, you need the 10 essentials of hiking, make sure that you have them. They don't have to be, 
uh, lightweight equipment they don't have to be sophisticated uh, brand names just go with whatever you had don't don't wait until you acquire all of the expensive and sophisticated gear and then you want, you want to say something and that's the benefit though too of starting off with small trips and such and it's kind of like the difference again between the confidence and hiking from the exposure standpoint like you're what you're doing versus the equipment that you have we were kind of talking about earlier stuff that you would be helped out by would certainly be just having good shoes in my opinion you don't need to have 15 backpacks i know now that we've started hiking i've got a 20 liter bag and i got a 30 liter bag yeah. and i got a 40 liter bag and i got a 60 liter bag and i got stuff that can hold a three liter bladder and a 1.5 <laughs> liter bladder I've got two sets of hiking poles that i'll use so that i have stuff for friends all that stuff we've just kind of accumulated a little Throughout bit over time the years, yeah. because you end up at rei sometimes you oh, just man. end up spending too much money <laughs> but things that are helpful though for your experience like to me Again, a good backpack. You want to be able to bring food with you. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that the bag's not going to rip and tear open and that it can hold some water. You want it to be able to take a little bit of weight. You don't need to take a million things. Yeah. So also make sure you have a little bit of room though for just a sweater so that you can dress hot, cold. And I would say uh, last thing that I was excited about when I was getting going was insoles. Um, if I hiked for too long actually and I didn't have the right shoes, my feet and my knees started to hurt. I got some insoles, much better. <laughs> Last thing you want to do is be halfway through your trip at night <laughs> yeah. and realize you're not happy with you. Yeah. And then you have to deal with you the whole way back. The whole, the whole way back. That, that's, not, that's not fun. So. Yeah. And then the other thing with gear, I remember in the beginning, like one, my first backpacking trip, I think I literally, I didn't have a water bladder. I didn't have the right, I just took like a big jug of water. But the point is to have enough water. And then don't shy away if you have friends who are into hiking and backpacking, see if they are willing to borrow, You see if they are willing to lend you some of their gear for you to try out. It always helps, like remember, um, Sarah and Guy, they gave me their backpack. I tried it a couple of times. And then with the sometimes with the cooking gear and food on the trail, in the beginning you don't, I was a little bit overwhelmed with all of the cooking equipment. I didn't have a jet boil. I didn't know what's the right equipment in the beginning. So instead I used to, to take with me just like food that I don't have to cook, like the tuna, tuna cans and fruits and snacks and that was enough in the beginning so you see what people are doing around you and then you get more comfortable you they why, are... why figure out your own good ideas when you steal somebody else's exactly good just see what they have to do <laughs> uh get some lessons learned from them and then just act uh, accordingly um there are also uh you can also rent gear from uh, companies like rei or from uh, local um, outfitters like here in Arizona, we have the, the hike shack. You can definitely go in there and see, say, okay, I'm gonna go camp for one night. I wanna try a sleeping pad and I want to try a one person tent or two people tent. And I'm just gonna, you know, rent a couple of gear from them to see what I like, what I don't like. Some people like to camp in a tent, some people like to camp in a hammock. So it helps to, to rent some equipments and try before you make a big purchase. And they can be expensive too. So it's nice to try to give the cheap stuff a try off the bat, one at a time and figure out what you like rather than trying to jump in too far and then realize you bought something that you don't like and you're stuck with it for a while. Mm -hmm. When we went mountaineering, enjoying yeah. the, the rock climbing uh, the groups and such, one of the big things was always like, don't buy your own rope, go with somebody else who has exactly. their own rope. Because it is expensive and, it, and you do yeah. slowly build your stuff up. And then when you feel like you've taken it seriously, you've developed that habit and you know, you know this is a hobby I like, then you can commit to that next level of financial investment. Yeah, because um, because sometimes some people go camping and backpacking and they just, I mean, they they were willing to try, but they realize it's not the thing for them. They they don't like it. They don't enjoy it. So it doesn't make sense to to uh, spend that much money. Like even with rock climbing, because when we did rock climbing, I mean, we want we were willing to try, but we didn't know if we really liked it. So for more than a year, we were just tagging along with other people, and we didn't commit to buying our equipment until later. Right, and with all those things too. We got to the spot where, um, I, just, I feel like my brain just skipped. Yeah. Oh, like where we were buying ropes and other things to the effect of that where people wouldn't say, bring them and, and, and you would find time to, to get rides and to go out. I feel like I'm just about to talk in a circle. I really forgot okay. what I was about to so, say. So let me see the comments. We've got our Moroccan friend, Dreams. I completely understand the small steps into getting used to hiking. I actually enjoy hiking, but not camping though. Uh, my husband loves camping. I just can't, you're giving me more courage. 
Try it. Try it. It's, you, 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 you don't know until you try. I our, mean, our story in a couple of minutes oh, yeah. will teach you perseverance yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so stay tuned. Keep that courage over here because we've got to make room for the next thing. All right, Mark. I saw actually up above too that Fomat was saying that uh, he never goes into REI uh, to get oh. stuff. Uh, unless it's below and it's I missed. It's below, it's oh. below. Okay. Mark, love the tips. That's what we have started with here in Minnesota, going to state parks, three, five miles, trails, did camping hike, and hiking on the rim last weekend go. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we're that's, getting to. That's the story. That's, that's, that's the hook. The you story. have to stay here until we tell you about that, apparently. But uh, I think that's a good tip from Mark about choosing small trails, definitely. You don't have to go on crazy 20 miles a day or 10 miles or, you know, just start small uh, mileage that you're comfortable with. Three, five miles sounds like a good number. Hike with Mike. Start off with state parks first, which have many amenities. And later on, you can move on to more wild areas. That is totally true. Cause I remember when we went to Valley of Fire State Park. It's just like 45 minutes from Las Vegas. Just felt like luxury camping. They had showers and they had restrooms and it, it felt great. I think it's good to to have access to some luxury sometimes. Format, I never go into REI and buy something I wasn't planning to. Never, no. I did not buy an Osprey at Atmos yeah, AG655 <laughs> this weekend. Nope. That's the bag I have. Did you? I think you did. I think Fomaz, I saw one of your videos, the backpack looked like Alex's backpack. No, no, yeah, I think that was straight up sarcasm. That's <laughs> sarcasm? He, he totally did, is what he's saying. Oh, okay. No, I, nope, I never do that. I never go in. My God. I, I never I, buy Twix bars. We went, mm -hmm. we went to REI this weekend. We'll get to do a story from this weekend, but we went to get bear spray. That's it. What did we come back to? I don't want to say the number, but it was like... Three big bags of gear that we didn't really need. Oh, well, I see. I wanted to get uh, a hiking shirt, so I got a shirt. I bought myself a pair of Oboe's shoes because I needed some ankle support shoes for, for hiking in Kilimanjaro. So I took them out to the rim this weekend. I hurt my foot before we went, too, so I was happy to have them to keep me stable. Um, All right, we've got dreams. Sorry. No, no, we were looking at kayaks. We saw it on the clearance area, a oh, rooftop God. camper, which we're going to talk about a little bit, too. Oh, we have so many we news. We didn't get it. Sure. But man, we're looking at what it means to be a car camper versus a hiking camper. I don't think I've ever cared to differentiate the uh, two. I, we, head, I will share how I feel about it. I don't think, <laughs> however, I'm going to be a big fan of car camping. Okay, so we've got a question. Being in Arizona, do you start hiking in particular temperature? As I am sure it gets pretty hot there. Well, we had last live, was it last week? Yeah, last Thursday. Last Thursday. We went on that before. straight hike. Or is it two? It was two lives ago. We yeah, went two on an eight mile ago. hike. We went for an eight mile hike uh, midday here in Arizona and it was a bad idea. So yeah. definitely like, and we talked a little bit about uh, hiking in the desert. So here for people who, you know, who likes to hike in, there are some people who really like to like in, to hike in hundred degrees temperature, like this guy. Yeah, I'm okay with the heat hiking. I don't mind that at all. I, I don't, bring it I on don't it. enjoy it. I don't enjoy it, but a lot of people usually start early in the morning. Like it's very common to start around 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m. Some people do it midday. We're going to try to do one tomorrow morning was our plan, actually. We'd like to try to get out. Oh, yeah. So tomorrow's so, Friday, yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to try to go to a usury or something. Okay, hike with Mike. Hope I'm not hugging the conversation. No, no, hike with Mike. Uh, I always appreciate all the tips, and then they help us with, you know, talking points, and you have a lot of experience, so that really helps. So... Bring it on. <laughs> I will be quiet. The la la association. The floor. Oh. The fl I, I can't see. It's You're too fine. difficult. Can so you I'm, read for me? Sure, sure. I, I was going to keep on going then. Yes, I did. My backpack died. Oh, your old backpack died. I'm 16 years old. This is about the time. Tent or hammock. Um, so I was going to say, really quick, I'll do the tent and hammock thing in a moment here. The To kind of like keep on sprinkling in hard recommendations every now and then. Recommendation for this five minute span, <laughs> grab a cheap pair of trekking poles. Oh, yeah. You might not use them. A lot of people bring trekking poles along and they just like clickety clack forward with them. They don't really use them to hike, um, but that's fine. Cause in the beginning, that's not really the problem they're solving for you. They help you have confidence so that you're not gonna trip and fall over. Going down a mountain is just as important as going up. And you'll find that you can hurt your knee or your ankle pretty good on the way down once you're exhausted or fatigued. So to have those trekking poles gives you some of that confidence if you're crossing a little stream of water yes. and you don't want to fall in or if you're going down. So Snakes. even if they're cheap 50, 30, 20, whatever dollar trekking poles are a big stick you find in the woods. Yeah. Take one. It, it really does give you another point of contact on the ground and it'll make things familiar. Anyway, tent 
or hammock. I like hammock a lot. When it's nice outside, man, hammock is low maintenance. I got this much camping stuff. No under quilt necessary, no over tarp. If, I'm, if it's really nice out and I'm just going out nowhere, I, you can make it real small. The quilts and the tarps, or tarps, obviously, you can bring a little bit more. For us, tent camping is great Tens. though. Because we're, we both get to carry some part of that equipment. And the, the stakes and the poles are a bit of a pain. There's not always trees that we can attach up to yeah. um, here in, in the desert either. But uh, I, I'd say in that regard, tent camping is really is really where my priority is. I, I like tent camping. But also we kind of like spending the time, like, you know, if you're in a hammock, you can't sleep with the other person in the same area. And it sometimes can be a little bit unpersonal. But I do know they make two-person hammocks. I've never tried one, though. And they remind me of that, <laughs> with the uh, Blades of Glory thing with the hot dogs. <laughs> I don't know. What's wrong with this picture? I told you. I just you, feel like double hammocks wouldn't work for me. I don't understand so many references. <laughs> okay. well, I'll, I'll put a link up to Blades of Glory. It's the <laughs> okay, figure so, skating one. So, so we're, uh, I see a few people joining us. We're talking about how to gain confidence in the outdoors. Through both um, gear and experience, right? And through like your audience. And learning right? too, yeah. yeah. Um, so really, um, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, REI, what does REI stand for? Recreational Equipment. Equipment Incorporated. Incorporated I think, yeah. yeah. So REI is a big uh, store for gear here in the U.S. for people who are not from the U.S. And uh, so besides selling gear, they have you know biking, hiking, kayaking, fishing. Everything that you can think about, really. So social events. So is yeah, exactly. Mean, right? So no, about? I'm trying to say on top of the the selling gear. Oh, okay, okay. They have classes. They have a lot of classes, and I find those classes to be really helpful. Um, so they have hiking classes, and then they have backpacking and kayaking. So many uh, when it's snowing or areas with snow, they take people. Uh, out to give them uh, snowshoeing classes too. So it's a good place to start. If you feel like you're not confident to do it on your own and you don't have friends who go out, hike and backpack, um, it's something worth uh, checking out. Classes with REI, uh, if you are, some of them are free and some of them you have to pay, but most of the classes where you go out with the group, you have to, to pay for them. Uh, if you are an REI member, they are cheaper compared to uh, if you're not a member. And uh, some of them are women only. Some of them are even for kids to teach kids how to ride bikes and how to go kayaking or sailing and stuff like that. So I think those classes are very helpful. Um, they even have uh, classes to teach you about hiking in particular areas. Actually, um, since we're doing Mount Kilimanjaro this year, um, two years ago, we went to one of their on-site classes where there was just a person who hiked Mount Kilimanjaro before and they told us everything, pretty much everything that we need to know about the climb. And it was all free. So we were sitting there, they gave us information about the, the mountain, they gave us information about gear that we need. And then towards the end, they try to sell you something. But you, you will definitely walk out of those meetings with something new that you learn. But, uh, and, and with that, it, it's worth saying then, and I know you've covered it to some, the RER experiences are twofold. There's the lecture series that are, you just go in and you sit and you listen to somebody and you're in the store, then there's the ones that are out. The ones that are outside are usually money. The ones that are inside, if you're free, a member of other things, the are free or not. Um, but two different levels of commitment. Usually the ones that are outside also require you to sign up because there's limited seating. But the ones that are typically in the store, typically they yeah. won't fill up. But now it's different with the pandemic. They still, like Fomat said, they have online classes. Yesterday, yeah. sometimes I just joined their classes to learn more and, you know, just acquire more knowledge. I was listening to their class yesterday about how to choose the right uh, hiking shoes. And it was good. It was free. And I think I asked them the other day, obviously it's different from one state to the other, but starting to open up to on-site or like classes in their store. I'm glad. I'm glad, Mike, that, or uh, Mark, that you are also familiar with Blades of Glory. <laughs> so. Okay. So, uh, what else? How far are we in? We got 31 minutes. We could start telling our story. Maybe oh, we'll wait a couple God. more minutes and then we'll tell our story about the weekend. Um, you guys are awesome. We have five people watching. I was telling Alex that I re I'm really starting to look forward all the time to these uh, live streams. Okay, so we will still continue talking about gaining confidence in the outdoors, but well, tell us, tell us in a comment. Do you wanna, do you wanna know the story? You should create a quick hiking lesson. Aww. The hiking lesson. Oh, I broke my shin. <laughs> Grab the iodine tablets. Ah, oh, my. Yeah. But. Okay, so story time. Do you wanna start off, or do you want me to start off? 
<laughs> what? <laughs> okay, so last uh, weekend, okay, not too long ago, we we sold our car. Oh, you've decided to save the stuff. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give up too much okay. because I still. Yes, no connection. Oh boy. How about now? How about now? Oh, there we go. How about now? All right, I got it back. You got it back. I got it back. Oh, God. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're back. So what was the last thing that you guys heard? So that was our story. What a wonderful trip, well, right? What a wonderful that was trip. amazing. End of story. <laughs> Wasn't that funny? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why don't you... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sold the car. Sold the car. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, man. Sold the car, the end. And that's how I <laughs> lost my right foot. <laughs> what a story. <laughs> okay, you know what? You say, you tell the story. Okay, fine. I have this bug bite that's bothering me so much. See, she's off topic again. She can't help I'm it. I'm sorry. Keep, okay, keep going. <laughs> All right, I'll start off. So we sold the car that we had in order to get this new car. And I'll dance around what the car is. Again, hey, we, we drive okay, the... Don't tell what the car is because I'm making a video about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we drive the mystery <laughs> machine from Scooby-Doo. Um... And needless to say, it's four-wheel drive. So we, we were excited to go out to the Mogollon Rim this weekend. And we checked the temperature, obviously. It was like, ah, 60 degrees. And we're like, all right, 60 degrees. Like, let's get out hiking. It's 95, 100-something here during the day, Arizona. And I'm talking about the temperature, so you know we're about to make a temperature mistake. <laughs> <laughs> needless to say, we love it. So we fill up the back of the car with a tote um, that's got all of our sleeping stuff in it. And we pack everything in, and, and surely... We packed the uh, the tent, right? And mm -hmm. we packed the 40 degree sleeping bags, <laughs> because, which is a bad spot. <laughs> because this is how it goes. Usually when it's very hot in Metro Phoenix, that means that up north is very pleasant. So I even put my charcoal sandals and my shorts. And then towards the end, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna take pants in case. And then I was wearing like my, my hiking shirt and I, I literally grabbed my jacket five minutes later, five minutes before leaving. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to take my jacket in case. Yeah, I think we forgot something. And we did that typical <laughs> leave home and then we go, oh, yeah, I forgot that one really small thing. You know, and then you run back into the house and come out with like a handful of other crap that you didn't need. So we do that. And she comes out with a pair of pants. And I'm like, I'll grab another light sweater. Yeah, he was like, I just take a light sweater. And I'm like, OK, fine, I'll take a jacket. So anyway, we started off on our two hour drive, two hours from Phoenix, where it's 105 degrees. And we get up to the Mogollon Rim and it's like 50. Which isn't bad because it said six. Yeah. Well, that's fine, but but there are also like thirty mile an hour winds out up there on the yeah, rim. Oh my it was God. cold. Anyway, so we get there and the wind is ripping off of the rim, right? And you're trying to take pictures, and we're just no we're just way. looking at the trees, just remarking at like how much noise you can hear. It's so crazy. It's like you are in a different world. You can't even tell it's Arizona, and the trees are about to fall from how windy it was. So anyway, so we just said, but the plan was we're gonna go there, we're gonna camp for the first uh, for the first day. Was it Saturday? Yeah, we and wanted then, to go poke around lightly, yeah. and then the real hike was gonna happen. The and there is a very nice hike called the Rim Trail. It's just like a pleasant, nice, easy hike. We're gonna we were gonna do it, and then the next day we were gonna do a harder hike to to train. So I was like, wow, there's no way we're taking any videos or photos. It's just horrible. Then I found the park ranger, just talked to him quickly. Honestly, we always have the best luck talking to any ranger anywhere. They're like, always so awesome. They're to always us. so awesome to us. I don't know if they are just awesome across the border. We're just lucky. I'm just always behind a Biba giving a little. So puppy dog, can we, we camp here? I, I know, can we I light like, campfires? And he said, No, you can't light campfires today. And I said, I was like, Oh, darn. yeah. So he said, <laughs> he said, There's no possible way to have fire. And we brought wood with us. And it's like, There's no possible to do fire. All of the campgrounds are full. All, all the regular ones. All of the honestly. regular ones. And I'm like, I'm giving him the puppy. I said, where can we captain it? And then he was very nice and kind to us that he said, oh, there's this area and I can drive all the way there. You just follow me. It's and 10 it's miles a through the back country. You're like, yeah, oh, great. <laughs> literally, he drove 10 miles with us. So and not, he, not on the highway. Like, again, like we're going like road. 20 miles an hour on dirt road. And, and and I was just so happy because he was very kind and he would stop every now and then to make sure that, you know, we're getting there, you're going to find a spot. It's a little bit secluded, but you will like it and not a lot of people. So we just followed him, followed him, and then we found the campground for the night. It was pretty nice. It was, it was probably about 
five miles from where we were planning on starting our hike the next day, actually. So it, it did cover a good amount of ground that we needed to cover anyway. And we decided to go after we sat down there. Yeah. Uh, we pitched our tent and I brought an air mattress because, again, I was excited to, for the first time, try to car camp. And I'm, she's laughing. Because we, we, we don't do this. Like, we don't do car camping, especially with the car that we had. It's we just like, not possible. Let's, let's see how glamorous we can yeah. be. We're bad at being glamorous. Honestly, I don't like it. I like backpacking <laughs> and going to the wilderness and camping there. You, uh, so you brought the whole mattress. Yeah, it was a twin, <laughs> and we have a double, uh, a double tent. So I was like, oh, let's try to fit this thing in. And sure enough, if I blow up the mattress, you can't get it into the tent. So you have to get it so into like the tent you, we grab the and whole then tent. blow it up. So here I have like this tent next to our car that has like a little power outlet in it. Don't forget, cardboard box, mine. Um, plugging it into the back of the car and the extension cord is just long enough that like if you hold the tent sideways up to the side of the car, it just goes, so it's got like, I've got this big like, you know, one of those uh, car dealership inflatable guys like slowly standing up outside of the car. And then it's enough of a sleeping area that we go in, put it down, stake down the rest of the tent. And, and we realized the sun's going to go down eventually, so we stick it down. Wind is blowing. The wind is And we were crazy. already, like, remarking. Habib was already like, oh, my God, I can't believe I only brought shorts. Like, I'm crazy. I, and I'm sitting here like, I think I'll grab my other second sweater. So and, he, he, I was wearing a jacket. Like, the. if you guys watched the last video that I shared about cooking with the jet boil pan, that's the jacket that I was wearing. That's, the, that's actually the adventure we were on. But so anyway, so we set off then. We leave our tent there, stake down to the ground, tie a nice little fisherman's knot, and then a figure eight on a bite. Not on a bite. Just a regular figure eight. Pass through. Um, to keep it tied to a rock in case it blew away while we weren't and there. And then we left. And then we left. So we went out to this little lake and we walked around and we were cold. My foot still hurt a little bit from, like I said, an injury. I had just, I don't know, something dumb I did. I mean, I don't even know what it was. I, my foot just started to hurt the other day. Um, do a little hike. We get back to the campsite after this little hike. We went to a lake. It was nice. It was fine. Yeah. It was small. It was, it was a nice, just easy, what, half a mile hike. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was just downhill to a lake where they have a lot of bass fishing. And then we drove to where we were going to start our hike the next day. Oh, And it was so windy there so. to the point where, like, Habib wouldn't even join me out on I there. Was like, I walked out to the edge of the cliff and was, like, standing with this lone tree that was just shaking somewhere. It was it was so windy, and he just wouldn't stop telling me that he wants to go to the edge of the rim. And it just looks like the Grand Canyon rim, but on a different scale. So he goes there, and I'm watching him from far away, and he's, like, just dancing, dancing. And then the car... Even the car with the wind, I feel like the car is shaking right and left. Oh no, you guys lost the audio again. I wonder if it's a problem with, with the phone. Oh, That's All hilarious. Right, you know what's sad? I would have done the same thing because I can't stand camping. I need go. a mattress. So, oh, the story is going to get much better. Just, just wait. It's a good thing we started at 31 with the audio yeah. outage and our inability to tell a story quickly. Hike with Mike. I don't mind car camping in wilderness areas where there are miles and miles of hiking trails. Treats and I treat the camp. car camp as base camp to return to after hiking all day. Lost all. Can you guys hear us okay now? Okay. Perfect. Um, here we go. So I'm going I'm to power through here. Anyway, so we get back to the campsite. After, or we went out. We checked out the place. Really windy. Not a lot going on. It was still, it was cold though. I walked out there. My hands were freezing holding the camera. By the time I was done, it was so windy, and it's a cold breeze coming off the top of the rim. So we turn around, we go back to the campground, and we sit down, and Abiba's like, all right, let's cook some burgers. Burger time. Yeah. Because right, we wanted to cook some food. We wanted to sit down. Sure enough, test out the, the inflatable mattress. And it's a twin, so it's about this big. So I sleep. Yes. And then the, the tent is about this big. So needless to say, if any one of us just futz, the other one just fell right off the bed, right? Like you're just trampoline the other person off of. So we got to get rid of that, put down the bed rolls, and that was just a big waste of time. Meanwhile, Habiba grabs this wonderful jet boil pan that we oh, have. Oh, yeah. She sets it down, pulls out the jet boil thing, and she starts getting ready to cook food, which she has a video. It's very good. Yeah, it's the last good one. Video. Yeah. And they were delicious burgers. Oh. Meanwhile, though, we're sitting here just trying to, like, psychologically, like, all right, like, we're s let's like, get ready for bed. Like, we were trying to, like, pump ourselves up because it was getting cold. It was really cold. <laughs> Sun was down. <laughs> Needless to say, crawl into bed about eight, and we're both just laying at each other, trying your best, like, two little worms to, like, share body heat somehow but from two different entire sleeping bags so what did we have like us so i had my jacket and then i had probably t-shirt and then i had the the insulated the omni heat right base layer that's, and then that's a pants. columbia thing the and then i packed socks and then i just had um my regular <laughs> pair of pants on and uh two little light sweaters on 
And we climbed into our 40 degree bags, uh, chatted and, each other. Yeah, up. so we didn't sleep on the mattress. We pulled our regular backpack in bedrolls, the, the C to Summit bedrolls. Besides, I think I have a pretty good one. It's like rated R3.4 or something, or yours is R3.4, yours is like 2.8, but they're kind of thick. Mine's like an inch and a half, yours that's, is like. Yeah. But they're I don't good. remember, but that's the one that we take camping, and I like them. I don't like sleeping on a mattress. Yeah, they're like great. That. They compress up to about this big. Obviously, you have to take a little bit of effort to roll them up, but they're by all means great bedrolls. But anyway, so we go to bed, and the ambient air temperature overnight drops down to about 15. <laughs> I think when I remember getting up around 3 in the morning, it was 18. <laughs> It was, but it was cold. So for me, he was kind of comfortable. He said, but I was, I was really miserable. And that's the that's the one mistake. We always pack our twenty degrees bag. And now we have a car with like always. hundreds and hundreds of extra cubic centimeters of space, time. and we're like, nah, let's bring yeah, the forty degrees. Yeah, just pick bags. the forty degrees. No so need to overcomplicate. We we packed the forty <laughs> degrees, and oh my god, when I went to bed, I was not comfortable. I was like, oh my god, I can feel my knees are getting so cold like literally my knees my uh my upper body was good but my knees are going to freeze the from breeze was the ripping cold. through the side of the tent and uh to the point where yeah it would steal heat from anything so if you were pointed toward the side of the tent or not toward the other person either your butt would get cold or your knees would get cold yeah so we we went to bed around nine yeah i'd say we went to bed about yeah so nine. we went to bed around nine i think i fell asleep for about 30 minutes and then from how uncomfortable i was i woke up and between 9.30 up until 11 p.m. And I'm just sitting there, there contemplating what to do with my life. Literally, I can't fall asleep. I can't do anything. So I was like, you know what? I can't do this. I cannot do this. I'm going to go to the car. <laughs> yeah, she, was, she, was, she was contemplating leaving me there. I ended up actually sleeping in the tent for, for so 9.30 till about So I in the go morning. to the car. I go to the car and that's where the adventure begins. I go to the <laughs> car. I'm in my sleeping bag. And I think it's going to be any better. And it's not any better. <laughs> I'm just sitting there, dying in the car instead of the tent. Cold the breathing on the window. You said you started the car at some point. And I you started get the, the hot car. Air to I started the, the, the heat, like the, the, the hot air is not coming out. And I'm like, okay, today is going to be the end of it for me. So <laughs> I, I opened this, uh, this uh, audio book. There's this audio book that I started listening to, The 12 Rules of Life. I listen, I listen, and I listen. And all he's talking about in these rules of life is how to to be resilient and then stand strong uh, facing any adverse events in life and i was like i'm gonna kill you if you were a person so i listened <laughs> to that audio book for like how long i don't know god knows how long so and then i fell asleep i fell asleep for like 10 minutes and i woke up again and i'm so shivering i'm like shivering shivering and then i found this bag of cherries that's just then i was like well i have to distract myself somehow and I just grabbed the whole bag of cherries and like one cherry, two cherry, three cherry. And my <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't come. When I found her at the end of the night, I came over. I was like, wow, if I'm a little chilly and she's not in the tent with me anymore, it's probably I bad ate... for her. And the car's not on, so I knew you are bad. I ate the whole bag of cherries. I was surprised just... you hadn't learned to juggle all the pits by the time. I was, you had nothing else to do. Because like, I, there's no way for me to distract myself. And then around probably 2.45 a.m. is when I fall asleep for 30 minutes. I fall asleep for 30 minutes, I close my eyes, and then someone is knocking on my window. And that's me, because I stepped out, because obviously I had to do the thing guys do at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and uh, just by standing out there doing that for a period of time with my lamp, I was like, wow, I got pretty cold just standing out here. And granted, I was, I was there for a while, because I was doing, I'd been holding it. <laughs> cold outside. <laughs> Come over and I knock on the on the car and Abiba just wakes up and she's just sad. It's like, why did you wake me up? I barely just slept. <laughs> I was just like, oh man, well this is pretty bad. Uh, I could tell this so he, wasn't working out very well. He got in the car and he's like, oh, shivering, shivering, shivering. It's like, well, we climbed Kilimanjaro and climbed the seven summits. Look at us on the Mongolian rim dying. <laughs> right, because we packed t-shirts. So what do we what do we do? We're dragging the story on, so I'm just gonna get on to it. We left at three o'clock in the morning and drove home. That's how it played out. That's, that's exactly. We didn't do the hike. We did not. We didn't do nothing on that stuff. We had just a car full of crap. Hopes and dreams we left at the campsite. Burgers. We ate burgers. They were delicious burgers, let's be honest. But we were thinking like if we go hike down there and it's still this cold, we were certainly not prepared even to hike with that sort of gear like, oh my gosh. So when, but, when, when Alex told me, we should probably go home. 3 a.m. I was, I just felt like my, my heart was never happy. <laughs> I, I had to, I would, I had to say like none. Of, she, I don't think you would have said it to me, but I was definitely like, I think this is the thing. But anyway, so we drove home. So that's and the I story. And I unpacked everything at home, 
and everything got put away. And now we've got our weekend trip coming up this weekend where we're going to make it up to ourselves. We're going to make it up. So it's going to be gonna better. Hike Humphreys Peak hopefully twice this weekend is our plan. Um, not necessarily all like up, down, up, down, but we're going to go hike that area is our plan. But Oh, yeah. Well, when we were in Idaho, too, we went snowmobile. We love oh, snowmobile. Oh, my God. We just packed like goofballs this weekend is our problem. We have cold gear that we love. I told yeah. Isaac this story is too embarrassing to share. So I tell but... everybody. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> That's. I told him, Alex, this is embarrassing. This is a bad reflection on us. And he's like, well, no, but it's, it was funny. Like, it's it's memories like this that matter the most. If, if you got to be ashamed of some of the stories and you can't laugh at them, then, then yeah. you, you're going to be fixing your mentality to not enjoy it at some other point, too. You got to be able to laugh at yourself. So let me read some of the comments here. Those burgers looked so good. Fomat. I, I, I agree. I think they were so good. They, oh, yeah. They were perfectly thin on the inside. They were the thin ones, I should say, which I think was good because we were a little concerned that the jet boil pan meant mostly for, like, boiling water. You, we were happy to get the jet boil specific pan that dissipated heat the right way because if you get, like, a cast iron stove, you're going to run out of fuel before you get the cast iron, you know, pan hot. But I got to say the jet boil thing worked really would, well, though. I think it was the best part of the trip. Oh, the other best part of the trip. Oh, yeah. So, our vehicle, the cardboard so, box. No, no, that not the car. So f 5 a.m., we get to the gas station, and I'm like, I'm dying from being cold. No, no, I feel more comfortable. I go to the gas oh station. Oh, my goodness, that part. Yes. So I go to the <laughs> gas station to use the restroom, and then my eyes are half asleep, like you just imagine, and my hair looks like I'm coming from a horror movie. And I'm walking out, and then I see in front of me, and lately I'm starting to realize that my I'm, I don't see as well as before, so I need to go fix that anyways. So I'm, I'm standing outside of the gas station, and I'm looking, I was like, what is that? Santa. What's that? I'm like, oh my god, am I am I dreaming? And it's literally a big elk in front of my face, in front of the gas station. He's not standing right like in the gas literally station. Literally there, and I'm like, is that a statue? What, what's that? And I'm just looking, and then I, Alex is like, what is she doing there? So he came out, and it's just like three of them, and they they are huge, and they're just sitting out there. That was also. Oh, uh, I wish I had part. pictures of them. But yeah, there's a little elk with big fuzzies. Right there, I've got a picture of him standing right next to, like, you know, the 87 octane sign right there, like, just in the gas station parking lot. And I'm over here like, gosh, Habiba, you're like, we're back to civilization. Let's she's go. on Instagram doing stuff again. And I'm like... I, look up, she's taking, I was like, oh, my gosh, that's an elk. <laughs> she's doing something for, your, for real. It was amazing. Okay, so hike with Mike. Oh, my God, I clicked reports. Am I going to report you? You know, he's <laughs> going to report. You're going to report us. Okay. Trekking pals reported trekking pals. Hike with Mike. For me, being a to tropical guy, biggest cold is my biggest 50s. enemy. I'm cold when it's in the 50s. I'll yeah. be honest. I grew up in I a like really cold it. house, uh, or at least being able to tolerate cold. I am fine, to be honest with you, typically with extreme temperatures. I got no yeah. beef in either way. I can, I can deal with extreme heat. Oh, no, I can deal no with the extreme heat. cold. I'm okay with both. I don't like heat. But. Cold is fine. I was, we were joking about how when I grew up back home, it's not that we had like a built-in AC and heat system in the house. So many times I would change my clothes for school underneath my blankets. Remember? Yeah, I think that was you me. I, I, yeah, I've definitely I do done that. Okay, so let me see. Uh, the first trip, Mike, the first trip my son and I went on this year got down to 30 at night. When it's cold and I car camp, I bring a pee jug. I don't have to go out into the cold to pee at night Man, in the back country. I can't you. tell you that story. That story I, will I be too much. I can tell you that story. I'm, I'm going to go live one of these days when I you and I are different places, and I'll tell you that story. <laughs> it's a good one. See, she's, but, she's scared because it's possible. No, it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. I started, To tell the story. No. Yes. The jug, the pee jug is a, such a good idea. And then there's even the, they make the, the chiwis for women to use, like the, the go girl actually did a giveaway last year. It wasn't used, it was new. No, it was a new one. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, th I think pee jug is a good idea, especially, you know, when it's cold out. I'm gonna well, consider Well, people use it more importantly, I think, because you put your heat into it, and then you can put that heat back into your bag. Like, sometimes people would boil water, and then they would take it and throw it in the bottom of their sleeping bag so it would stay warm all the time. Yeah. But. Uh, I wish there was a video diary. Good luck. Great story. It would have been hilarious I, eating those cherries and talking to the camera. Oh, gosh. I know, but uh, I should have. But but I was so exhausted and in pain that my my mind wouldn't... Uh, sorry, we are outside in our community, so... It's... it's 
a new skill that we have to acquire now that we're trying to commit to having like that sort of content available as well. It takes a different mindset to take an unhappy moment and to push through it. And that's Aww. why you released that little video the other day too when you were hurting after uh, we were in um, Sequoia? Sequoia National Park and we released yeah, a little Fomat, video. Yeah, Fomat Fomat's got it because he's, he's in the... By the way, so since we're here, Fomat is our first uh, member on the YouTube channel. So thank you, Fomat, for being very supportive. And I hope that you enjoyed the, the sequoia behind the scenes. Right. Because that's just me filming Habiba while she's in pain, not caring. Because why? The content comes first. <laughs> and we didn't, we didn't stick with that this weekend, but we totally should have. Yeah, we should have. I, but I was, I, was, I was really tired. We should get a little car mount so we can put the GoPro in the corner of the car. But the thing is, too, it's like we both got a camera and then we got the GoPro. And it's like all these little things require time. Like maybe there's if you have any good car filming stuff, like maybe like a suction cup to put on the passenger side window mm -hmm. with a wide angle like your thing, like so that we could just kind of like capture that sort of candid yeah, stuff. That would be nice. That's a really good idea. We just need to to do it to do it okay so format i had planned to go backpacking this weekend but but my wife expressed an interest in trying cabin camping this is a big step for her so that's what we are doing cabin camping is not my thing at all the things we do for love yeah that's so sweet and i gotta say i think it was mike earlier i never wanted to be the type of person who like called it camping if i went out and just dragged my house into the woods on a vehicle yeah, I don't like that. that's not for me but but like mike was saying i think earlier with calling it home base that's what i'm talking about i would still take a tent and call the car camping the thing we do the night before the night after if it's crappy area or we're going way off into the middle of nowhere you just want to pull up and go sleep it's nice to have a little mattress with some beds some privacy because you're up above your car rather than perhaps down on the ground um but also it means that we can perhaps stay there Someone left a Barbie here. And then there's another one. Do, 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 do. Apparently it wasn't a very good story. <laughs> I wasn't saying anything important. Sorry, no, it's good. I just, no, 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 no. I, it's been I'm sitting being there silly. the whole time and I wanted to show it. No, that's my sign that I'm rambling on and on is what that means. No, keep um, on. Keep, anyway, keep it up. I agree though that we were looking at these car top campers now. We saw it at REI and there's something you can put on top of your car. Um, and it just kind of folds out and has a little ladder that you can climb up on top of your car. And these, some of these aren't very big. You can still fit up a bike up there or a kayak or something like that, which we'd be interested in doing. And I'd like to do that, I think, because this would have been a nice spot to go car camp for the start, still bring the backpacking camp to go hike out into the wilderness, camp for a day or two, and then come back. But to have the ability to start your day at the beginning of the hike rather than wake up at home, gather all your crap up, stop by the grocery store, pick up some gas, drive for three miles, and then get there at noon if you left like a human being, or at 10 o'clock if you got up at 4.30, because let's face it, you still drag your butt. Um, that would be nice, and I, I'd really like to get one of those. Plus, we could just go on extended trips. Um, I'm, I think you're on board. It's just, they're not yeah. cheap, but I think we're going to try to do that at some point. Yeah, them. yeah, definitely. No, they look like a good option. Uh, Mark, what part of the rim? I think you probably think in the Grand Canyon, but this is the Mogollon rim. It's in uh, Payson. It's not the Grand Canyon. I thought it was similar from what you were saying earlier, that he's on board with it being the Mogollon rim. So we does went... it have different sides, too? No, 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 no. Because obviously the Grand Canyon, there's the north and south rim. This is just oh, okay. the rim. This is just one rim. But I, so we went to the visitor center area, which it's not called. It's the Mogollon Rim Visitor Center, right? Is ah, that the Mogollon Rim Visitor Center. Yeah, yeah. So we can pretty much get there. You hang a left off the main road. Obviously, there's a lookout to the right. You hang a left. And we went probably about 15 miles down. Not 15, maybe it was 10 miles, I guess, with the, the, the ranger said. I think it was like campsite 717 or something like that. Yeah. There's so about. many opportunities for camping up there in the Mogollon Rim. Uh, Fomat, that's a good story for the member section, the P story. Oh, there you go. Do you want it, to hear That's Fomat's way of saying, all right, all right. tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me, tell me. <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll put a video together for, for you, Fomat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it'll be a reenactment. Uh, we don't have like... A, it's gonna be like pretty much just Alex sitting down and telling because there's nothing to see. <laughs> right, and there's no way Habib is gonna tell this story about herself. Although you tell it better than I do. Oh my God. Half the time I'm sleeping for all the good stories, it seems. All right, you lose a lot of heat when you open the tent up to go outside. That is so true. And oh my God, I feel like uh, the worst decision to make or the hardest decision to make is when you have to go to the restroom and you are sleeping and it's cold outside. It's like life-altering decision. Yeah, if you're the type of person that can just jump into the pool, you're the type of person that can go outside and pee immediately. It's just, you know, you got to do it to rip the Band-Aid off. I Many will say, nights I held it the whole night because I didn't want to go outside of the tent. I will say, though, oh, man, there was the night, too, where you <laughs> lied to me about us going outside, and I was convinced for a year that I might have had a dream that we went outside and I got a cactus <laughs> stuck to my foot. Anyway, 
For me though, if when you're setting your tent down, one of the most important things that you can do with your tent is draw out the wind area. You don't want to let the side of the tent blow up right up against the side of the tent because like heat and moisture and other stuff will evaporate off there and make it cooler inside. If you keep that rain tarp pulled tight with those stakes and the little strings and the cords that are on the outside, you keep that frame away from the inner core of the tent, you will have a lot more luck with heat. Um, and when you even open up your little vent there, still you'll have the wind wedge that's usually the side of your tent and stuff. So I'd say if you have the opportunity to make sure you get your stakes out and make sure you pull that rain tarp all the way away, because then when you do open your tent like that, you have the opportunity to get your shoes on really quick if you leave them there. And meanwhile, the whole tent's not exposed. You lose a yeah. little bit of heat, but eh. Oh, Paul must be saying, I love you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's we love crazy. everybody that's hanging out yeah. with us. We, we, we love you too. <laughs> yeah. So. Really nice. I was uh, even Monday. I told Alex, I'm really. I can't wait for Thursday to be here. This is becoming really fun for for us to to do. Okay, uh, hike with Mike. A lot of times, misadventures are the best adventures, and that video was the best when Alex said, "I'm gonna use both cameras." I died. <laughs> I don't even remember I was gonna say that. In in the Sequoia video, because like you were using the GoPro and the other. Camera. Oh oh, I told oh you, you you watched. I haven't I seen it. I told you yet don't again. film, and then you said, "No, I'm gonna I'll use, use both, both cameras." cameras. <laughs> I okay. got to get vertical for Instagram and I got to get a horizontal for YouTube. I was like, all right, buddy, let's, let's get some pain going here. Oh, Mark, uh, Mark Nelson is from Phoenix. Oh, all right. Awesome. I feel like an idiot now telling you, oh, what side of the Grand Canyon? <laughs> all right. Sorry about that. Okay. Because I, I would think that people who are not from Arizona, they probably would not be familiar with the Mogollon Rim. Ah. Yeah, that's just my assumption. But anyway, so what area of uh, Arizona are you in, Mark? Yeah, yeah. Right. We, we're always looking for somebody else to motivate us to get out. Again, we're not necessarily speed demons all the time, but if you want somebody who's willing, and we've got a cardboard box now, so we're willing to meet you anywhere at that point. All right, so hike with Mike. My car camping is I drive my truck to the campsite and set up my tent, still use my tent. I just have a place to park my truck, and right. then I go out. Yeah, that's what we did when we went to Glacier National Park, and it was nice because they are all worried about... Uh, uh, food storage because of bear activity in the park so it was nice to have the the car as big storage per right. se. which okay. apparently doesn't mean it's actually entirely safe either so it's really nice when you have a rental car because uh, they get into that not my not my fault all right i have a, we have a new uh, friend right here francisco esquivel hi i have a question i saw a video of you and you guys did ice climbing I'm planning to go to Alaska and I would like to do ice climbing. Oh man. Go for it. It's it's the best I my favorite activities. It was unique it was in that sense too. Like it was an exotic thing because it's not something we have available to us all the time. Yeah. I will say when we went to Alaska, and I'll, well, I guess we'll try not to get too lost on it, but we've hit sixty minutes, so we're fine. You were fine. Um, we have time today. Yeah. We yeah, just yeah. we just have to go to the gym and train for Kilimanjaro. We've been doing the important. treadmill for two hours or whatever uphill. Anyway, so ice climbing. <laughs> there are glaciers everywhere. In Alaska, not everyone is necessarily a mountain worth of, but when we went to like Whittier, there was like the Twenty Seven Glaciers tour. Like literally, tw you go on one hour tour, you see twenty six glaciers. Can you believe that? But with this though, we went to Matanuska Glacier for that ice climbing area, which is just a bit north of Anchorage, probably by about an hour and a half. Uh, you can take the long way, I guess, uh, to Denali that way, uh, the long way. But they just took us out there, and you had to pay a little thing for a company. I'm sure you can put up the name of the company. Nova they... Nova Adventures. They are so good. The guide was really nice and knowledgeable. We're still friends with him. And their price was very reasonable compared to prices in, in Alaska. And they do other stuff, too. I think they do rafting, rafting as well. Yeah. But uh, it's nice. I think the glacier now, they don't let people out there on their own. The glacier obviously a big, big, tall area of ice. You only really see the top. And a lot of the, the ice on the front you'll see is like... It's like liquid, it's moving. Obviously it's ice, so it's not moving fast. Mm. But I mean, over hundreds of years, et cetera, it's got motion, it'll recede and melt. And um, once you get onto the thicker part though of the glacier, it can be hundreds of feet deep at that point. Yeah. And as a result of that, water sometimes has to drain from the top to the bottom and drills these little holes down through. It's amazing. People have been falling into them and getting in a lot of trouble or dying. Dying, I mean, that's and So they started to shut it down. But the ice climbing was great. Crampons were a lot of fun. They took us on some light stuff. If you do have a little bit of mountaineering experience, you heard me like we're talking about trying to figure eight earlier to hold the rock down. If you can just be familiar with some of your knots and, honest, and such. Yes. So no, I was gonna say even if you don't have experience rock climbing or mountaineering, go for it. Oh, it's definitely. very straightforward because they do the knots for you. It's, it's no, a convenient. It was just like I mean yeah, it was just like a figure eight knot. 
uh, it's uh, you're not going to do any really difficult walls most of the the two or three walls that we did were you and know, it was reasonable. just you and i i think they took us on two or three special spots if you had a group of five or six though you might not do a lot of climbing for a half day on the glacier because you have to get there get back etc but um the experience was fantastic to be honest with you and i would say definitely definitely follow through on it yeah, so, so definitely check it out. Uh, Mark grew up in Phoenix, moved out 20 years ago to Minnesota. Okay, so I think that's okay, why okay. I got confused because I, you said Minnesota. That's why I kept going with Minnesota. Uh, but ever done before any recommendation. So recommendation, like we said, with, the, with ice climbing, uh, the company is going to provide you with all the necessary gear, including crampons, the helmets, uh, even the boots. Uh, so really all you have to worry about is your backpack and then being warm on the glacier because even if it's summer uh, we did it was it july july or between july and august uh, it's still very cold on the glacier yeah. and then depends on the on the weather outside it can get chilly so definitely uh, make sure that you have some sort of athletic uh, pants and then even some layer underneath like underwear pants and then make sure you have some down jacket or fleece jackets you don't really need a rain jacket and then wear gloves yeah. definitely gloves and then sunglasses for sure uh, because on the glacier the reflection of the light really makes it hard to see people say sunscreen as well because obviously sunscreen. the sun does damage to your skin that way as well yeah. i agree totally though with the gloves gloves uh, some lightweight ones uh with the pants though certainly don't dress like you're going onto a snowmobile Big and baggy is not the way to go here because you're going to have really sharp shoes on that will catch and rip everything. You want a couple of layers of tight stuff. And I don't necessarily mean spandex. I don't mean that type. But, but you don't want baggy stuff. You want something that you're a bit mobile in, but that's pretty close to your skin. Otherwise, you're going to catch it on your legs every time you step and you're not going to have fun. Yeah. So it, it was pretty funny for us when we were in Alaska, especially the day we went ice climbing because the day before... Um, I don't know, like we shared the story before, but we were up in Alaska for one month and we were working from up there. The plan in the beginning was to only spend four days. We ended up spending one month there. And by way of planning for four days, we only packed like just not too much clothes for four days. So the day before ice climbing, we went on this hike and it was crazy raining. And so all of our clothes oh, were wet. Portage so pass. On Portage Pass. We didn't have any clothes to ice climbing. So... We kind of just went to, to the public laundry very, very early in the morning and then we had to, to wash and dry everything, including our shoes. Like literally I threw Took my the insoles out. And insoles and yeah, I threw, I literally threw the Morel, <laughs> my hiking boots into the dryer because otherwise I wouldn't have anything to wear. And then but we it got turned there, out they gave us boots anyway. They gave us boots anyway, so it's just like two dummies. Two dummies who leave the campsite at 3 a.m. Hey, but we felt committed to our cause there. And you'd rather in those cases have the confidence and comfort going into the adventure being prepared than like God, I'm going to be miserable all day. Yeah. Uh, Francisco, if you have any other questions, this is just like what I have uh, in mind for right now. But if you have any specific questions, let us know. Mark, we used to camp at Tonto Creek near the Horton Creek Trail. That was the that's one we, we wanted to do. That's what we were going to do. We were going to start at the top yeah. and go down and then back up was our plan. Yeah, that's, that's what around. we wanted to do on Sunday. But obviously, just like, didn't have enough luck with it. We're going to go do it again. That, I mean, there's yeah. we can't be bested by it. Yeah. Okay, so dreams. Don't ever use a Gatorade bottle. We go biking and my husband, for some reason, keeps using Gatorade bottles. <laughs> okay, he probably starts out with the Glacier Freeze and then he ends up using the uh, Lemon Lime Rush, I'm sure, at the end. But, oh, my God. No, because that's, that's the same thing, too, is after this story that we are not telling you about right now, Something similar to what you're alluding to you will learn was that about to occur. You, you was will, about to. It didn't happen. Dreams. You will learn that also women, women also use Gatorade bottles. I don't. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Mark Nelson used to live 75th Avenue, Bell. Right, moved 75th moved to Avenue, Minnesota Bell. when career change. Sister still lives in Arizona near Prescott. Oh, Prescott. nice. We love Prescott. That, Prescott was the area that we went to. <laughs> To when we when we went um, climb rock climbing on our own for the first time because we used to go we go with we went with a group we took classes and usually someone sets up the anchor for us to do top rock climbing but the first time we set our own anchor it our own it was in Prescott. Okay, so let's see. Uh, <laughs> no, no, Purex laundry is what uh, Dreams is saying there. So I <laughs> use or Mike was saying I use a Purex laundry jug. I was like, all right. Gets that, some of that bleach left over. <laughs> just, just, just so there's no mixing up the cause there. You want a bottle that you wouldn't drink out of anyway. Uh, ignore this. Luck to you guys. Thank you so much. Um, and I label what it's... Some masking tape. So he, he ah. labels it with something very obvious. So we'll be doing a live regarding our content going to Alaska. So 
I'm sure we'd be happy to do so. I don't know yeah. if we've had a plan to cover it so much. Obviously, there's a lot of content there. So much, yeah. Right, but we I don't think we really wanted to hijack all of our stuff because we're still trying to build and just talk to people. Yeah. And if we try to beat them over the head with just that one thing, um, we would feel kind of like we were doing a disservice to it. But if people want to hear about that, yeah, we'll, we're, we're happy here. to talk about it. We're happy. Because yeah. <laughs> um, I tell, I, t I was telling Alex that, uh, I mean, we really enjoy these live chats and we, we're really happy to see people watching. But at the same time, I don't want us to make it all the time about us, 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 us you know us, what I mean? I, I want it to be, uh, we're doing this, and I, we, we want it to be an open conversation where, you know, you share your stories. I mean, I'm loving all of the stories, snowmobile in Minnesota, Florida. It's, it's fun to hear what other people have to say and also learn from, from each other. I don't want it to be just like, we're doing Kilimanjaro, but, but if you guys want us to talk about it, we'll talk about it, and I, I'll talk about it all day. Because <laughs> I say, just last night, actually, we so our original flights were canceled, and we finally got our money back from yeah. them, and booked our, our new flights to yeah. Kilimanjaro just last night again. Yeah. So we've got all that, and we've got to figure out, probably we're gonna go back to our doctors for the last round of stuff we need to get medicine for, or, or, yeah. or um, vaccines for, but other than that, I think our trip is bookended now. We have to figure yeah. out when we're doing a safari somewhere in the middle there, but really uh, getting there and such is the big stuff, and we've got that scheduled now. So but I was so bummed yesterday because the initial flights, well, we, 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 we booked the first one with Turkish Airlines, and they just canceled the flight, like, not because of the pandemic, but they just canceled it. And this, the flight that I got yesterday was double the price. And I was so bummed because the first one, literally, a round trip was eight hundred dollars, and I was like, "Yes, that's a steal." That's definitely why they canceled it. I think that's, that's why gotta they be why they canceled it. They were like, "Whoa, well, it's um, time to make money again." Francisco, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. I appreciate all the info. Uh, recommendations to stay, hotel, cabins, Airbnb. I haven't booked my stay. Um, man, that's a. Well, it just depends. Where are you? Where are you adventuring? Picture. Huh? I wanted to show this picture. You were talking about the snowmobiling. I have a picture that I want to hold sure, up sure. at some point. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, Francisco, you know what? Um, send me a message. Send me a message on Instagram if you have Instagram. Or send me an email on wearetrekkingpals at gmail.com. Habibu was just talking the other day about how I to always. like talk about getting plans for Alaska. Because Alaska content's been doing good. Yeah. But, um... She was literally talking about making a video about all the stuff you're asking right now. My short and quick, if I could. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, Alaska, travel in regions. Everywhere is far apart. So don't plan to be in Anchorage and in Seward and in Talkeetna all in the same day. It's not happening. And you're probably not going to want to make three or four mile drive everywhere. Again, everywhere is far apart. So plan, here's what I'm doing in this area. Here's what I'm doing in this area. Here's what I'm doing in this area. Plan to hit the whole region and do everything there before moving on. If you have an out and back, maybe you can be smart and mix it up so you do a little bit on your way out and back in, but yeah. traveling takes time. You're gonna need a car as a result of that, my, is my opinion. And especially because Highway 1 on Alaska takes you from Anchorage down yeah. to Seward. And for most of the time around the water there, if you cut right across the lake, it takes like five minutes, or the, the inlet of water, but you have to go around and it's a one lane highway. Yeah. There's an accident, you're stuck for a long time. So give yourself time to get out in the morning before people are crazy uh, and, and be patient in your own mind. If stuff doesn't go your way, uh, Figure out if there's a hike on the side if you're if you're in the middle of nowhere. Uh, yeah. Last but not least, download offline maps. They're helpful when you when you have to ad lib something like that. So yeah, just send me an email, Francisco. I I always do this. Like whatever, if you have questions, just send me. I'll send you recommendations. And uh, also, I I received some messages from some people saying that uh, they were having a very hard time finding rentals in Alaska right now. I think you were saying everywhere right and now. And Glacier are. National Park, Grand Tetons, Yellowstone, like all of the big. Uh, hot destinations for summer people are having real hard time finding rentals they can't find cars they can't find rvs it's just becoming ridiculous i don't know um okay so uh. your videos are so helpful your video was the first that popped up when i was searching travel to morocco <laughs> during pandemic so keep up your great way work thank you thank you dreams awesome thanks mark i, I see you saying you're gonna step off i'll say bye to you uh, since i see your stuff and uh, yeah, I'll tell you, we'll, maybe we'll try to sneak some Kilimanjaro stuff into our next area. And then we'll just see if people are okay with it or not. But uh, we're happy to talk about some of that stuff. Yeah. So we'll bring it up. Absolutely. And maybe different video sequence on like pre. Sure, just yeah. Kilimanjaro content differently entirely. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, I know we, we usually say that uh, for these lives, we go for one hour. So if, if you guys have to drop off, totally understandable. But we'll just uh, hang out here for a little bit more and see if there are any questions and then by the time the sun is down, which is not here. too long ago, not too long, right, yeah. which it is happening pretty soon. Long. 
yeah so yeah and then we'll get to our gym stuff that we have to do anyway so so that's part of the training that we do for Kilimanjaro we just go on the treadmill and we have different intervals on an incline the last one was uh, was pretty hard two hours I, I made up a pretty rough schedule actually so we'll ease it up this time yeah let's do that dreams my Moroccan friend is saying let us guess the type of car there you go don't don't watch any of the Instagram stories they might be leaked from time to time no a little bit of info. there's nothing so yeah you know what since we have seven people here if you guys if you guys uh, want to guess the type of the car leave it in the comments maybe we can do like some gift card or something like that uh, attack on titans or we can do like a gift card but i'm not gonna share right now the answer we'll just take the guesses write them down you have to write down for sure me. i just wanted to show oh here's a little video of habiba sitting in a boil in a pot of water on the side of the road can uh, it focus on me focus 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 anyway Anywho, like <laughs> she's on a little pot in the hot springs in the side of the snow. That's our Idaho, probably one of our better pictures from Idaho that we actually had a really good time with. So we have to take Subaru. notes of these. So put in Alex, girlfriend. put in you. But uh, it's going to be difficult. Uh, how am I going to get uh, your emails to reach out and such? Oh, you can just answer right here, right? And oh, then just no, cut right it from now. The video. You don't have no, to no, add it to no, the whole no, one. No, not right now. I just take no You know what? I'll just take note of the correct answer. <laughs> By that, I'm telling you, none of them are correct. <laughs> Just kidding. Warmer. Oh. I don't know how to say, like, warmer or not to a car. Anyway, we'll, we'll leave you with that little... So what thing. else? Well, how about how about we just say by next Thursday we'll tell people what the car is? Sure, yeah. On here at least, even if we don't make a video. If you show up here next week, we'll tell you what our new car is. And maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll show you a little bit of it. Maybe we'll, we'll drive it over here and we can finish up in the car. Sounds good. All right, Mike. Have a good night. Yep. Ah, uh, yeah, we got to go do stuff anyway. All right, I'm going to say bye to everybody. And I'm going to, like, lean this way. Bye. It was very nice hanging out. You're leaving? Bye. No, I'm not okay. going anywhere. <laughs> okay. It's crazy. I keep trying to think of box cars since you have made references. <laughs> hey, he's the one saying, but I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm gonna wait for the sun to go down. Oh, I gotta give you the hi ho silver. Away. <laughs> Come here, crazy. <laughs> Make it the. <laughs> If you guys have seen Ace Ventura when Nature Calls, he is like, uh, I hold silver. <laughs> he just up? rode past. <laughs> yes. He does that all the time. Oh, man. Okay, so. Look at the kiddos. There like, you go. Hey, we, we have three more minutes of content to burn up. Here. <laughs> so look at, look at others. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Any, any other comments, questions? Nah, nah. I, I hate it when it's been out of feel. Ah, it doesn't matter. What? No, I just want to see. There's still a couple of people watching, so. Okay. Well, then, if not. Why Africa? This weekend could be fun. North Carolina has a burn ban in place. Oh. That's the worst when you go camping and you can't burn stuff. Yeah, it's a bummer. Why Africa? We wanted to do the Seven Summits a long time ago. And not that that's died, really, but just... Hey, like, yeah. you see all the stories about the top of Everest being so popular, where, like, some places that were otherwise awesome to go now sometimes have lost some of their appeal because, like, everybody yeah, wants to, just... like, buy their way there. Or, for that matter, just go there anyway, even if they totally deserve it. There's just a lot of people. Kilimanjaro with a glacier perhaps disappearing off the top in the next generation or two. Which, obviously, there'll still be ice but it just won't be classified as a glacier. But they use that to get a lot of fresh water up there. When you're hiking, they get water from the glacier up there. Some of those things will become less and less available over the years. That seemed like a good one to get out of the way because it might not be the same in a generation or two. Um, and it might change over the course of our generation. Uh, other ones, I think Elbrus you had on there. It was a good elevation. The people that were going to take us up Elbrus for a good price were going to give us some training. Yeah, Elbrus was <laughs> good too. Elbrus is the highest peak in uh, in Europe, which happens to be in Russia. A lot of people think that's the highest peak in Europe is Mont, Mont Blanc in France, but it's actually Russia, and it's pretty cheap compared to 
it's cheaper than Kilimanjaro. Getting to Russia is not the most expensive flight and then doing the climb right there is not that expensive. But that was the first one I wanted. I don't know how we switched from wanting to do Elbrus to Kilimanjaro. It was well, the ice climbing and versus the knot yeah. as well. But um, like I said, with the, with the glacier stuff, obviously, uh, what am I trying to say? Australia would be an easy one. We're told people could drive to the highest peak of Australia. So that one wouldn't be that bad. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's just scratching the itch, but also seemed like a good novel way to get out and do something big, right? And I think that's big. I'm excited to do it. Yeah. I really am excited to do it. My Moroccan friend, Dreams. Dreams, where are you from in Morocco? I'm actually glad you're going to Africa. You don't see that on YouTube as much. I can't wait for those videos. Thank you. I'm really, you know, uh, I'm excited for Tanzania. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be a lot of videos, a lot of work too, to get those videos in place. But uh, I'm really looking forward to go to Morocco at some point and, you know, just make videos up there in Morocco. Just people talk about tube call forever and talking about how the good the desert. rock climbing is there as well. So that would certainly be uh, a straight winner. Yeah, and even I, I would love to go rock climbing in Morocco. Taria, Taria is a good uh, area for rock climbing. Who knows? Maybe we could ship the mystery uh, machine over there too. Mystery machine, our mystery machine. <laughs> Which is also the name of the Scooby Doo. Ah, uh, that's why. So. Okay. Well, awesome. Habiba's procrastinating because she doesn't want to go. I don't want to go gym. work out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying to be tolerant of that in a clever way. You're not really being procrastinating. I know okay. that we're looking forward to this, but. Yeah. <laughs> Casablanca. My parents moved uh, to Vier when I was 10 years old. Moroccan at heart and Virginian as well. Aww. Well, that's fantastic. That's nice. I'm actually almost curious, where did you move to first when you came to the States? Because for you, it was Chicago. Oh, she, oh. Uh, you know oh, what I mean? Like, where, where was your... Virginia. That, so it was straight to Virginia, wasn't that like where Probably. you settled? It was there? Yeah. Okay. It must have been a different experience to, to move here. You know, when you were younger, it must be fun. Okay. All right, I'm we ready. Go. We're gonna go. It was very nice chatting with you. We dragged this a little bit longer, but it's always fun and nice, and so happy to 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 be able to chat with all of you. And uh, we will see you guys next Thursday again, 6 p.m. Arizona time. Take care of yourself. Enjoy this long weekend, most importantly. And uh, we love you so very much. <laughs> Stay classy, San Diego. All right. Bye, <laughs> bye Dreams. <laughs> bye, Fomat. I don't know who else is still here, but you guys take care. And we'll see you very soon. Bye. Bye.